Good morning, my outstanding friends. It's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University. And today, we're going to be talking about Scorpzilla. Is it Paradelia, Paradelia, or however you pronounce that, or is it just what it is, is Scorpzilla? I say it's Scorpzilla. Now, Tyson Carlson, you know Tyson, everybody knows Tyson. He, he, i worked with him for years, we've been working together. He has a fabulous site, which is on the back of Scorpzilla. <laughs> now, he thinks it's Parodiolia. And I am seeing things that aren't there. Well, I am not going to go with that. <laughs> and again, there is no tension here. There's no fighting. There's a discussion of op opinions. And this is how you do research. You don't do research by saying, this is it, and there's a case closed. You say what I tell you, or you're an idiot. Well, that's basically how people have become. <laughs> it's, it's either you accept whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, how crazy it is, or how realistic it is. Either you accept it or you don't accept it. But it, it appears that there is so much division among people now, everywhere, every, it's not just this, everywhere, that once one guy takes in a position and the other guy takes a position, it's just like you end up throwing rocks at each other. Well, I don't do that. I don't care. If, if he doesn't see it, I don't, I, that doesn't bother me. But I am going to show him my evidence, and he shows his evidence. That's what research is about. I'm not throwing punches. He's not throwing punches. We have strong opinions, <laughs> obviously. If you don't have a strong opinion, you might as well just go sit in the woods and just play a harp or something because you have to, in other words, to get an opinion, you have to do research. Tyson does research. He's no idiot. He's doing research. He's looking and saying, why does this not make sense? Why does this make sense? Now, I am going to show you why it does make sense. And this, in my opinion, is Scorpzilla. It goes all the way up. And there's this pincher right out there, which is a stinger. And thank God that Tyson did some research on this because he's basically helped me to prove my point, that this is a venomous gland. And, you know, I, let me show you what he says. And I'm not, I don't want to show you his entire video. I want you to go up to his channel, subscribe to it, which is Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures. Come up, subscribe, and watch his video. I am just going to make the points that he points out. There's one about his eye, and there's one about the stinger, and there's some other things that are, are really bullet points. That's what I'm going to focus in on. And then you can come up if you want and, and see. Well, you should. You, you really have to, to do this correctly. But I don't want to take his work and just splay it all out on my channel. I want you to go to his channel and start to pay attention to what he has to say. Because I'm going to tell you right now, he has some of the most fabulous stuff on the planet right now that is actually being investigated. Not being just dismissed. Like, oh, that guy's crazy. I don't watch that. No. Tyson and I have been doing this for years together. And, um, and we've determined a lot of what he has in his backyard. And it's, sorry Tyson, but it's on the back. <laughs> Back, back of Scorpzilla, my friend. Let's 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 go through this. And again, we're, no, there's no hostilities here. If you can't if you can't make a couple of little jabs and, and you know, we're just having fun. That's all. It's just fun. Kabish. Now let me start it off here with Tyson making his introduction into Scorpzilla. Here we go. Hello and welcome. I'm putting the video together. Because Roger Spur put a video up showing his Scorpzilla. And we've been going back and forth on this for quite some time, okay? So this is nothing new between me and him. So um, he's calling this a carcass of Scorpzilla, and I'm saying it's not. I'm saying it's Paradelia. <laughs> okay? Now, he put up a video of one of my videos, showing one of my videos, and I was explaining something to him. That video that I'm explaining to him, all I'm doing is explaining something to him. It's not showing all of my evidence, so this isn't really fair that he put that video up and you don't get to see all of my evidence, okay? So I'm going to show you all of my evidence of why I say this is not a carcass, this is not a stinger, that is not a, 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 a gland, you know, back there for the stinger. Um, I'll show you the anatomy on the stinger and how that's not a stinger, that could never articulate 
This stinger could never articulate and do what a stinger does, okay? Because a stinger has to art art articulate in order for the the, the, the cart or this creature to hit its target even, okay? So we're going to get into this right now, and I'll start at the head. Okay. I'm saying the biology is for a bigger carcass that is... You know what, let me just let me just interject as we go along. That's probably the best way. I'm going to address the stinger portion first because he's saying it's impossible. The stinger has to articulate and do all of it, which it does. It's, it's absolutely built flawlessly for that specific job. And then we'll go to the discussion about the head and the eye and all that business and the volcanoes. So let's take a look at Google Earth. Okay, Tyson went and looked up what's the deal with stingers and unfortunately I think he missed what the deal is because here's what a stinger is all right there's the gland there's the stinger there is at the very end there's a vent they call it let's see if they shows it in here all right there's the vent uh, venom pour they call it. all right so it's a pour but it's at the tip and there's a little hole in there that squirts the venom out as they jab into somebody so, re these are the only things I care about you seeing, is that there's a sack. All right, when he jabs them, the, through the venom pour, it squirts all this out, and of course it would deflate, obviously it would deflate that, because it's a bulb, and it becomes deflated when he squirts his venom in. Now let's see if we can make any determination on the carcass. Okay, so here we are at what I call the stinger. And here's the stinger comes all the way out here to here, and it squirted when it died. It just, it just <laughs> pooped out all its gush right here. You see that? You see that trail going right over here? <sighs> now, that means it would have deflated the bag, and the bag would have been just like this. And this here, you see what the height is here? This is 3,000 feet below sea level. Guess where this is? 12,000. That's 9,000 feet more. This is a mile and a half high, the stinger. That's how big this thing is. The, just the stinger body is a mile and a half above the seafloor. Now, there was a vent. Remember the vent? Or what they call it? Uh, I can't remember what they called it. But anyway, this is it right here. That right there is the stinger venom um, where it squirts out the juice. Now watch where it comes here. Here comes the stinger. Here it is and it comes right down to its fine point. Right there. Right in this area is where that channel is right here and it squirts right out of this area into the creature that it's trying to kill. And there's the tip right here. Now, this is a little cloudy because it's squirting some stuff over the top of that tip. It's squirted some stuff and is laying over the top. So, we have the, the pour. That's right, that's what they call it, a pour. All right, a vent pour, same thing. It's right there, right there, exactly where it should be. Identically to be where it should be. This is the bag that has deflated now. But if you look at it carefully, you can tell that this is biology. This is not just some, I don't know what you would call it, cracks on the ocean floor or whatever. No, this is, this is part of the stinger assembly. Now, if this had filled up with all this juice that was over here, there's a lot of juice came out of there. All right, if you pushed all that back into that bag, it would flow, it would be just like this. Right. You'd have a, you'd have this. This is exactly what you would have. <laughs> Does that look familiar? And of course, this would all be filled up with fluid. All right. When he died, it just squirted out of here. Now, that's the one thing about the the, the vent, the um, pour, or whatever you want to call it. So there's the bag. Now, what else do we need to talk about? The articulation. He says there's no way it could articulate because the, the thing is pointing up this way. It's not designed to do that. It's relaxed and it's This actually pulls into this entire area here. Now, I'm going to show you very closely. 
let's come in close because I say this is the pin right here and all of this swivels on that pin and it drags it right back into this pocket and watch this here you see we are at 4,700 feet below sea level down here we are at 10,000 below sea level that's a mile plus deeper than right here all right why is that because this pulls right into here and if you look at it really careful you can see that the structure is phenomenal this pulls right into here to retract and the stinger goes right into these grooves here you see these grooves this goes right back in here this goes right over to here you see this blank spot this blank spot is literally where this retracts into right into that hole <laughs> I'm not kidding it. and this is the place where it pockets in so there's your articulation this snaps back into here now if you read on how a scorpion kills its prey it catches them up in here with whatever it has to grab them with its legs or whatever and then it swings it, this in which would have the, the pincher would be here snap and that, that's what squirts it in this snaps around all right that's what he's missing it's not that it's just hanging off here laying around in the woods it comes right around to as he grabs the thing snap that's what if you look up how they attack and how they kill that's precisely how it's done now so I hope that clears up the, the, the picture here all right here it is right here this is where it goes right to there those wrinkles all the way back to here it articulates back and then it's set up to grab a wrap around and snapped in and kill the thing and that's what it would squirt into the thing right here this stuff that's dribbled out of here as he died now this he says was not it was part of this and just broke off well I don't see it that way I don't see any way to prove either way but I see this as a perfect tip coming off the point of Scorpzilla and you know it might have hit into here and bounced back or something but I, I would say that's about it I, I don't think it was ever attached to this Tyson thinks it is I don't now this is the entire backbone of this creature all the way up to his head all right, and we're going to see the head in a second. But look at what you're dealing with here. This height is 9,000 feet below. Well, let's go up here. We're only at 1,500 feet below the sea level. Down over here, 16,000. That's over two, almost three miles between here and there. And this is his body. This is how big this creature is. And the whole thing comes wrapping around here to support the squirter. Now, this I cannot explain. I cannot explain why this is so shallow. This is only 200 feet deep. It's only 200 feet deep here. I don't know why. Up here, of course, it's above sea level. But, but this whole area here looks like at one time... For some reason, or whether there was a whole thing that laid out here flat and this just laid on top of it, I don't know. I can't explain this. That's true. I cannot. As I would say, je ne sais pas. I do not know. However, I do know the rest is laying on top of whatever that was. All right, because over here it goes down to 13,000 feet. Right here it's like... 13,000 feet right here and up here it's uh, 2,000 here it's 372 feet below us. it's way coming way up why is that I don't know that I have no explanation for but all the rest I do we've seen the squirter we've seen the gland we've seen the vent the um, pore we've seen the structure we've seen the back I showed Mount Spur up here, which is the rectum. It's, it's, it's a rectum. And, and I'm going to address the fact of the volcanoes, too. Because Tyson says, well, how could Mount Spur be a volcano if it's a rectum? And the eyeball up here is also said to be a volcano, and it's an eyeball. Well, how could that possibly be? Well, volcanoes. Let's just talk about volcanoes now. Volcanoes come in 
all kind of different flavors. The butt one, the rectum, is just nothing more than your digestive system farting and pooping. Basically, that's it. It builds up. It's all about biology when it dies and it's encapsulated and it's in a pressurized situation. It will explode because decomposition creates gases and all kinds of noxious chemistry. And eventually, if it's encapsulated and crushed, it will explode. That's what happened to Mount Spur. Because it's an anus. That's what they do. They pop <laughs> every day if you're in good shape. Now, that is, is what happens in the digestive system. And it can happen anywhere in the digestive system. You could have guts up here, which are intestines, and they erupt because they're close to the surface. Because they're, they're just festering and poof, they pop out. Yes. Or you could have an anus, yes. Or you could have an eyeball, yes. Because below the eyeball, the lens of the eye is a thin structure that covers volatile chemistry. All your chemistry is volatile. I don't care if it's in your butt, or it's in your lungs, or it's your heart, or it's your eyeball. It's all biology. Biology does something called spontaneous combustion. Okay, here's what we're talking about right here. Spontaneous combustion occurs when a substance with a relatively low ignition temperature, and that's all biology, hay, straw, peat, and all of that stuff, begins to release heat, and it releases heat because of decomposition. It may occur in several ways, either by oxidation in the presence of moisture and air, which is outside where something rots, or bacterial fermentation, which generates heat. That's what we're talking about. Bacterial fermentation generates heat under the ground. Now, is it in your gut? Yes, that's what happens in your gut. It's nothing more than bacterial fermentation. Now, normally you poop it out before it explodes in <laughs> your gut. But in this case, the guy can't poop anymore. So it just generates and generates and generates and all of a sudden explodes. Now, the same thing, bacterial fermentation can happen below the eye. It can be happen in the intestines. It can happen literally almost anywhere in the body if it's covered in the right conditions and, and so forth. So that is what these, the origins of these volcanoes are. Hawaii is nothing more than an open gut wound. It's, it's leaking all of these festering hot gases and, 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 and magma, which is nothing more than biology that's overheated. And it's just flowing out. That's why uh, it doesn't explode down there in Hawaii. Yes, it, I don't think it's explosive at all. It's just leaking all over the place because it's uh, something popped open in the gut or something. I'm not sure what is that going on down there, but that is some form of biology just festering and just gushing and running out. Lava flows running down. No explosions to speak of. Every now and then a little pop here and there. Because that's just the nature of this compression. It will pop. But it's not going to pop like it did Mount Spur. Or these major, major volcanoes that are just extremely explosive. Okay, now we're going to go to the head. He's saying the biology is... For a bigger carcass that is laying there, okay? That's what I'm saying. Okay. And I'm going to start the head here to show you, okay? He says that this is a head, okay? He called this an eye. Right here. You get in there, and he said this here is an eye. Okay, well, if this is an eye, then why does the rest of this keep on going out here like this and clear out here? You understand what I'm saying? Why does the rest of this keep going like this if this is the eye? And also, if this is an eye, why is Mount Vernon, a volcano, the eye? Okay? Why? Why, why, how is a volcano? Because he also says, claims that up here, Mount Spur, which is over here somewhere, is the anus. So how can a volcano be the anus and an eye? How could it both transition from a volcano to a volcano? Okay. All right, I did cover that, that this, it's just biology, spontaneous combustion. This, the people are living around here, they're not all that worried apparently about that thing monstrously exploding like they would be up in Mount Spur. You wouldn't want to live next to Mount Spur. And I'm going to go over this, and this is, this is his tear ducts up here, and he's actually got tears coming out. <laughs> 
He's got the beard. He's got everything for the. So let's just go a little further with um, Tyson here. Now you, you see the points he's making about the eye, and that it, it, it's how could it possibly be volcano when the anus is a volcano, and that the head is too big or too small, or I'm not sure what he's saying about that. It, it's not the right size. Um, here go. Group or very noxious stuff, very vile stuff. So how is an eye very vile? Because an eye. Well, it's, it, I've gone over that, but it's just nothing more than biology. Any biology that rots and is compressed will explode, and it will pop out of the most easiest place to to, to break through. So that covers. An it. eye don't transition that way. So, if Atlantis is an eye. And that's what an eye looks like transitioned. Okay? That's an eyeball transition. All right, he's, he's, it, Atlantis is an eyeball, and it has transitioned, and I'll show you that right now. And I'll show you the eyeball and the things he made the statements about that why would this come all the way up here and look similar to what's around the eye? I'm going to show you Lake Crowley, the beard of the creature, and, and I'm going to get in pretty deep. You know, there's a lot, it's easy to say, oh, this couldn't happen, this couldn't happen, and why would this be, why would this, well, I'm giving the answers. But just to say this couldn't be or that couldn't be, that's not, that's not science to me. I say let's look at it closely. So let's look at it closely. Okay, let's just go over a couple quick things. This is an eyeball, and I'm telling you right now, that is Atlantis. Atlantis was an eyeball at one time, and then they used all of these little outlets and inlets to, to, to go to their rings. It was an it was an island. That, I mean, it was a uh, an eyeball. Look at this. This one somebody sent me. I can't remember where this came from, but that's an eyeball within a rock. That's a that's as close to an eyeball as I've ever seen. I suppose it maybe isn't one, but I think it is. This is Crowley Lake. Now, these are hairs. The black and the red is what you see in blood. Black and red is blood. This is kale and clays. This is like facial-ish hair. Now, this is what it is, and it's eroding from this lake. And these are um, above. They stick up. You can see them. They're broken off primarily, but where, where it is eroded below, you can see them quite easily. Now, um, so I've shown you that. This is, I believe, a rectum that is, uh, the flesh has eroded away and it's sort of popped up like that. These are the cells of the rectum, and this is the top. Um, we live on biology. There's no question about that anymore. If somebody can deny that, I would love to discuss it with that person and debate it, because we do live on biology. Now, what biology is where, that's the key. And where what was written about it? That's another big key. All right, Typhon referenced, I'm sorry, Tyson <laughs> referenced Typhon. <laughs> Isn't that funny? They're almost the same word. Typhon referenced, I mean, Tyson, oh my God. Tyson referenced Typhon. All right, this is Typhon. He is elaborated in, in history in Apollodorus 1.6.3 is exactly, exactly identical to this creature. He had legs which were the thighs of a human and then coils underneath. He had a red flared flaming eye, which is sat right there, swishing away. He was attacking this fish here, and that's not written about that I can find, but he is absolutely attacking this gigantic fish. And it appears this must have happened when Atlantis collapsed and all this stuff ran out, because he showed Atlantis, and Atlantis is the eyeball. It's exactly identical to that eyeball I showed you. Not only that, I have found all of the optic nerves and all that stuff that run off to here, and they run down here. This is all... I have I have verified it fully that it is an eyeball. And if somebody wants to talk about that, let's talk because I can show that it was an eyeball. Now, I can see that that is a fish and I can see that this giant dragon attacked him and here's where the vital flesh is actually exposed because it ate through 
the scales and everything. Here we are down in the blood vessels. This is right in the blood vessels of the creature's body. All of these are arteries. Then they go into what they call the blood vessels. And then they end up going into the capillaries. And then they drain into these black tubes. You see the black tubes running up. Those are the, the, um, the veins. And the, the blood comes down. It gets all used up. And by the time it gets down to here, it just <laughs> squirts it into these black tubes. They go back up to the heart to get recharged up. You know, I'm getting some new, new stuff. And this was, he was being attacked by this gigantic dragon. And here this dragon has beards. You see the beards here? They all have beards, it appears. Now Crowley Lake, to me, it seems to be the beard of Scorpzilla. These beards are different. This is a different beard. And Quetzalcoatl has also a different looking beard than the Scorpzilla, but they all have it, these beards. Now, this appears to be the source of the toxin. Well, it is absolutely the source of the toxin. This is all flowed down from this beard, right out of that, that single beard. The other one is not playing a part in this at this point. From here, it squirts all that stuff down, and it is just as noxious as it could possibly be. And it comes down and hits that fish in the back. Right on his fin. That's all coming right out of that dragon's mouth. Now, this is just biology, and it is biology, and it's just gigantic biology. That's, I think it was uh, 1,300 miles long. <laughs> and he's only half the size of Scorps. <laughs> it's only half his size. Now, even there's one even bigger one. This one here. Now, somebody said to me, this looks like a bull. I, I originally thought this was a dragon. And the dragon comes down, and the beard comes down here. Which I, they all have beards. And there's the eyeball. And I'm going to show you that. This is an eye, and it actually has the tear ducts, and it has the salty tear ducts. Now, somebody said to me, I think that's a bull. Could be. This is an eyeball. That's an eyeball. This is the middle of the head. And that's the nose area. And this eye is the Gobi Desert, and it is an eyeball. And this right here is the membrane that goes around the eye. You see it? This is the salty tear ducts. <laughs> They're collecting salt down here because his tears contain salt, just like yours do. You see it? Here's the tears coming right down in here and draining right into this salt area. And this is, I, I think they call it a tympanic membrane. I can't remember now, but it's something like that. And, and, and this, is a, this dragon here can easily wrap the entire world. And that's what they said. They did wrap the entire world and came back around and had its tail in its mouth. Now, that I have no clue about. All I can tell you is it sure looks like a gigantic dragon to me. And that looks like the tympanic membrane, I believe. And this is the tear duct. Now, does Scorpzilla have any of that stuff? Well, let's take a look. You know, I made a terrible mistake there. I talked about the tympanic membrane. That's in the ear. <laughs> in the eyeball, there's going to be a little tiny membrane that separates your eyelashes from your, or, you know, your eyelid from your sclera, which is the white portion of your eye. And that is what I believe we saw in the giant dragon in... in um, China there, the Gobi Desert Dragon. I believe that's what you saw, that little ridge right running right around there is that membrane that basically separates your eyelid from your eyeball. Okay, so here we are back at Scorpy. I call him Scorpy, we're good friends. Lake Crowley's right there, that's where the beard is. They all have a beard. Now, Tyson says the eyeball is not an eyeball. Let's look at it and think about this realistically. If that was the pupil of the eye, which it is, it, it has become the source of, of expansion of these biological decay, these combustive stuff. Now, let's look at the eye. I say the eye is this portion right here. All right, and he's looking this direction. Now, what is this right here? That's where his eyeball comes down, and right in there is where I'm sure this will be salty. You see the different color here? See how this is real green? I don't think this is going to be green like that because it's salty. 
Now, what else has happened? He's got a teardrop right there. A teardrop ran out of his eye. All right, this runs right back up into his eye, right into the salt area of his eye. And I think this is salt. Now, I'd like to know if somebody lives out in that area, is this, is this ground salty here? Why is it gray like that? I say it's salty. And, and he's run a teardrop right down here from his eyeball. Here's the teardrop. <laughs> runs right down and collected here. Now, again, here's Lake Crowley. Those were all of that, that, these things here. Whoops. That's all this. This is at Lake Crowley. This is, it's gigantic. These, those are hairs. All right, so that's Lake Crowley. Now, let's go back to Scorpy. Now, he said, well, why would all this same color run all the way down? Well, it's the guy's head. Now, he's laying down here. Basically, the other eye is on the other side. You can't see it because it's on the other side as he's laying down. This, he, says, he doesn't have to have his mouth wide open or anything. He's just closed up. This coloring is nothing more than the edge of his skin. And this is his eyebrow. Look at this. Now, have you ever seen anything that looks like this? It's just laying around here on the, on the surface? No, that's his eyebrow. All right, to me, that's his eyebrow. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. It's right above his eye, so that would be the brow of his eye. And here it is right here. Now, so that is how I explain this eyeball, it, that it is an eye. Now, this again is his beard over here. This is his teardrop running down to here. And again, I think this will be salty if somebody lives in that area and knows the, 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 the um, soil content. I would like to know, is this, is this what I'm saying or not? And then it, this all runs down and it just outlines his head. That's all. It's no, no big mystery here. Now, you see all this stuff here? This is like part of his body that runs off. You see how it turns real green here? That's where you've got decaying flesh collects up around this area and, and that's why things grow Sorry, so... I'm not sure. Now, again, Scorpizilla runs all the way up. I say this is his shoulder here. And he's, he outlines this whole area. The, the, all of that blue is way up close to the surface and way down here is thousands and thousands of feet below, miles below. So his body is laying on here, all of this blue area. This I can't account for. I don't know what's going on there, to be perfectly honest with you. We do live on biology. The entire Earth is biology. Was it one gigantic corpse at one time? I don't know. But I can tell you what, it's covered with them now. And when I show you this head of Scorbzilla and all of the green around it. You see, that's what happens is when bodies decay, the bloody fleshy stuff runs into the soils and it becomes very, very fertile, just as it has with Quetzalcoatl. All right, that's the feathered serpent. And here he is right here. There's the feathered serpent. There's his beards right here. You see him? Those are the beards. Now, they're different than, than Scorpzilla's beard. Scorpzilla has that big, white, fluffy beard. I don't know. And I can't find anything written about Scorpzilla in history. But I did find Typhon, and we found, everybody knows about Quetzalcoatl, a feathered serpent. And here he is here, and here's his headdress. is right up here. And these are feathers. These are literally feathers coming out of his head. And I can show you one that's very, very easily seen. Well, they're all easily seen, but... Let's just look at, you see all these, these little ridges? Those are nothing more than this. Those are these. You see the little variegations in them? Watch this. Here it is right there. Virtually identical. You see it? Here's another feather right here and another one of the uprights. And they're all over, and he goes all the way up the East Coast, all the way up to Canada. And up here is the Green Mountains, because feathers make things grow extremely green. 
they sell feather meal and they sell blood meal and this here is the feather meal and up here is where the blood meal was that leaks out of the body and causes everything to grow green and the body is not quite so green this is not not a big stretch here not hard to understand and the same thing happened with uh, with uh, Scorpzilla. His body created greenness all surrounding it because it runs off greenness around it. And the, the layer of the, you know, I don't know what the scales or whatever they were, is on top. And it's not quite as green. Exactly identical to um, Quetzalcoatl. So that's my evidence. I think I've... That's probably enough to support what I had to say. We saw the beard. We saw the eye actually crying. <laughs> this is the shoulder. All of this here appears to be part of his body. I, You know, again, this is going to take a lot of research. But this is the rectum. The body goes way over to here. This is still the body out here. You see here we are? This is... Minus 1,900 feet. Over here, it's minus 14,000 feet. All right, so it's miles from here down. So this creature was enormous. What all this is out here, why it's so shallow out here, I can't exactly explain that. So this is obviously things you can explain, things you can't explain. I think I've explained what is explainable, and I think it trumps... Tyson's explanation but that's for you to decide now again I want you to go to his site I don't want you to take my word for anything he's got some more things to say but I don't want to take every word of his come up here Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventure subscribe give him a thumbs up he's doing a fabulous job he's got one of the best sites in the world absolutely fabulous and it's amazing absolutely amazing um, but I, I, you know, we have a different opinion here and there, obviously. So let's see if we can make it work. Okay, this is one thing I want to point out. This is exactly the same structure as Tyson was pointing out in his video. You see this right here? those little, little bubbles and stuff and the, the the line here these are he's talking about hairs who cares about hairs maybe the hairs were there maybe they weren't this is in the ocean hairs do tend to disintegrate but this is precisely even these little bumps are on on um, my guy all right Scorbzilla he's my guy uh, again, I can't find anything in history that points to this. But, although I did, say they talked about scorpion men or something I saw somewhere a long time ago. Now, anyway, that's I, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty good with that stinger. Now, he's talking about how this. Why would this just keep continue, continue, continue? Well, first of all, this is laying on top of some biology. This down here is not part of Scorpzilla, obviously. So we have biology here, which is extreme biology, of some creature that was below Scorpzilla. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. But I can tell you what. If you trace this out, this is his nose. And that's the front of his nose. And this is running down, like running out of his nose. <laughs> it's like, it looks like to me. Now, he is laying on top of some creature. I don't think this is part of Scorpzilla right here. I don't think that's him. All right, I think Scorpy runs right up here. It may be part of him. I don't know. But I can tell you what, this is not. This here is part of this. I agree with that 100%. There might be some runoff of this, and he may be laying on top of something that's here that is not him. Obviously, it's not him because his nose stops here. So, whatever this is, is not Scorpzilla. I don't care if it looks similar. Obviously, it's going to look similar. This looks similar, too. This isn't Scorpzilla, either. This isn't Scorpzilla. You just have to have a discriminating eye. And I do have a discriminating eye. Now, this, to me, is hard to dismiss 
as casually as Tyson is dismissing it. And again, he lives right up here somewhere up on the neck of Scorpzilla, and he's talking about the biology that he's looking at being not the is being either too small or too big. I'm not sure what he said, to be perfectly honest with you. But it is, the biology is all kind of different biology in different places in your body. You have tendon balls that are big, very good size. And then you have ones that are so tiny that even the best micro electron microscope can barely see them. So just to say this one tendon ball doesn't fit the size of the creature, that's just not realistic. Because in, in us, in every creature, there's literally hundreds of different types of tendon balls in your body. Some of them attach to to um, bony areas, some of them attach to other tendon areas, some of them attach to muscle, muscle. They're all over, and they're in the interstitium, they're in the membranes, they're in the, um, the, the fascia, they're in the pleura, they're everywhere, everywhere in your body. And they're all attached with these little straps. So you can move around and everything comes back to where it's supposed to be. So some, they're, they're not all this size. Some of them are this size, some of them are this big, some of them are this size. So that, that does not hold water. So far, I can't find anything that I can agree with Tyson on as far as his determination of what he sees and what I see. And that's not to be nasty or anything. It's just that we have a difference of opinion or I, I would call it a difference of um, the way we see the anatomy. And this here, you can see right there, that's the block. This thing sits right in. This thing retracts right into there, and the whole thing sits right back in. When he attacks somebody, they say they grab him somewhere up here, and this thing comes in, snap. And, it, and that's where this plunger would go right into him. That's how they attack him. Um... So I'm, I'm pretty good with what I got here. And don't forget, go to Tyson's channel, look it up, and see what you think. All right? And we're just going to keep going on. Um, you know, by now, you would think the mainstream would pick up on this, and there'd be some discussion on this. It's so difficult for the average human mind to even start to compliment, compliment, comprehend this, or even to start to open their eyes they're like glazed when they look at this. Most people, if you're looking at this and t spending the time to do this, you are an exceptional human being. <laughs> Trust me, because most people would dismiss this and laugh and call you an idiot and just be nasty as hell. And that is what I found for the last 12 years. And so between Tyson and I, there is no nastiness here. There's, there's strong differences of opinion, obviously. Obviously. Nobody wants to be wrong. I don't want to be wrong, but I've been wrong a lot. But this time, I don't think I'm wrong. <laughs> so, but I never did think I was wrong. So maybe I am wrong. Who knows? What do you think?